Hello, hello, hello again, and welcome back to another episode of the Summer Spotlight 2020. I am your host, Gail Nicholson. So great to see you all out here today. As always, please put something in the chat. Let us know you're here. Give us a like, give us a heart. And if you're on YouTube, please subscribe. We are building something amazing here, and we want you along for the ride. So today, I get to introduce you to a really amazing lady from the UK. She's actually in England proper. And um, she is kind of fabulous in that um, she is a career success coach and works with people to take their day job and make it their dream job. This is some pretty awesome stuff. So here she is, Miss Charlotte Crabtree, career su success coach from charlottecrabtree.com. Thanks so much for being here today, Charlotte. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. It's wonderful to see you. I am doing good, thank you. How are you? Oh, I'm phenomenal. I am phenomenal. I got to go be with trees and bugs twice this week. And <laughs> no, it's a good thing. I go out to the lake and there's no Wi-Fi. I get to do the stuff that I can't do with, with it, distractions. And, you know, I am just so grateful for, for living in such beauty. So yeah. I hear it's a wonderful little break in the rain over there in England. How is things going with your weather this summer? Yeah, not so bad, not so bad. We've had, um, it's been up and down, but we've definitely got a couple of days heading into the weekend now. It's a beautiful sunny evening right now. So yeah, feeling That's good. Wonderful. <laughs> now, let's talk a little bit about the situation that people are in with the coronavirus, the lockdown. Um, this show, in fact, began out of quarantine being called and Major League Sports being canceled um, to give a space to, to, to help guide people into what's possible if you don't have a day job to go back to, right? Mm -hmm. And some of us have been essential workers working all the way through, and some of us will be looking to find a new corporate position going forward. So um, where do you fit in all of that? You help all three types, don't you? I do. So generally, um, the majority of people that I work with um, are already in a corporate career. Um, some people will be looking for um, a change of direction. Some people, like you say, will be forced into looking for, for something different to what they have been doing. Um, at the moment, there will be so many people out there who are either having to find a new path or whose jobs aren't the same as when they left. So, you know, if they've been furloughed or on temporary leave, for example, I mean, in the events industry where I come from, the landscape is vastly different. Um, and so for a lot of people going back to work, their role isn't going to be the same at all. Um, so it's really important for, for people in those situations to look at you know, how to create and maintain a positive mindset to keep yourself going, understand what the expectations are and, and finding out where you can really apply your strengths um, and add value so that you can enjoy your work um, even in these strange times. So that's that's really what I um, what I help people do. That's awesome stuff. That's awesome stuff. Um, now, I, I know that someone as intentional and organized and um you know on top of things as you are you've never had a situation where you were passed over for recognition or maybe felt like your services weren't appreciated to the level that we would want to be appreciated when we give two-thirds of our waking life to another person's enterprise you've never experienced that have you oh no never never <laughs> absolutely absolutely I used to I used to be online 24 hours a day to pick up any email and respond to show that I was active um I'd be in the office from you know seven in the morning till eight in the evening every day I didn't know how to say no or set boundaries to be able to manage my workload and I used to just assume that because I was being given more work then I should be able to handle it but but I was exhausted mm -hmm. Um, it's funny, I actually remember one time 
my dad helped me to um, buy a new car because mine died one day on the motorway. And I was so excited about it. Um, it was a gorgeous like little convertible and I got it in the middle of summer. Um, anyway, I was working, I was working really long hours at the time um, on a project where there should have really been two or three of us and it was just me. Um, and one day I left the office around seven or 8 p.m. and it was still a beautiful sunny evening, much like today. And I looked at my car, which was now all by itself in the car park, obviously. Mm-hmm. And I, I'd forgotten. I'd forgotten they had a new car. I was in this such a work bubble mm-hmm. that just to stop for a second and, and remember how beautiful life is and that I had something new that I was excited about. And the fact that I'd forgotten it made me so upset. And I just realized that nobody cared. Wow. And I, I don't mean that, I don't mean that, you know, to ask for pity or anything like no, that, I but that. yeah, no, like nobody, nobody at work was acknowledging how hard I was working. I never got a thank you or a well done. I just always got given the next project and the next project and where are you up to with this? And, you know, one day I just thought, what is the point? Why am I giving up my entire life for this? And the thing is I had worked so hard to get to where I was. It was exactly what I'd been planning to do with my degree. And I'd always thought of myself as an ambitious rising career woman, but it just didn't feel worth it anymore at that point. And it made me feel completely lost. Well, what did but you I do realized... to change that situation then? What was the turning point for you where you finally went, enough is enough? Yeah, well, do you know what? That was only my first burnout. I think I maybe <laughs> went through maybe three in different companies before I actually did something about it or, wow. you know, mm-hmm. figured out that I could do something about you know, it. I'm, I'm mind blown, but I'll bet you there are viewers mm-hmm. watching going, yeah, I'm on number five myself. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, ladies, it's time to make that change. <laughs> um, so for me, when it happened again, I went through the motions of, oh my God, how is this happening again? You know, it must be me. I must just be not capable or I'm not good enough. Why don't people like me? And why is nobody listening to me and totally blaming myself? Mm -hmm. Um, But, you know, I I spoke to Mm -hmm. other friends who are having similar struggles and I realized Mm -hmm. that that wasn't true. Um, I realized, and I mean this in a very impersonal way because a lot of employers out there do really care about their staff as people. But the reality is your employer doesn't care about your professional development. That might be quite a controversial thing to say, but what I mean is people who own businesses hire people to make more money and to make their lives easier. So fundamentally, that's what everything comes down to. Um, And as soon as I realized that, I was able to take accountability for my own career and that changed everything. I would show up for myself. I would work smarter, more efficiently. Um, I would find ways of communicating with people, including my managers, that enabled me to set boundaries without getting on the wrong side of them. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, I learned to recognize what I was doing well, learn from what I was struggling with and appreciate the value that I could then see that I was adding. And I think once people can get a hold of that attitude, it's a real game changer. Yeah, I I agree with you. And I just, I want to like, spotlight that for a second because one of the not too long ago when I was working my previous life my nine to to five right we had some young people work in the the um the phones and we have some old people that that you know they've retired and they're they're helping out for you know to supplement their social security right Mm -hmm. and one of the younger girls came into work sick And I mentioned to her that it was irresponsible of her to come into work sick when we have old and frail people in the office. And she was completely shocked because most of our young people are brought up in this go, 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 you have to show up, don't call in or you'll get fired kind of mentality. And the fact of the matter is, and I had a really good conversation with her, you know, you have to take care of yourself because mm-hmm. if you run yourself ragged by coming in here sick and working to the point where you end up like really, really sick, mm-hmm. not one of these people is going to visit you in the hospital. Not oh. one. You know, they are not going to take you in when you have, you know, months of convalescence. They are not, you know, you have to focus on 
taking care of yourself, including, like you said, your professional development, because yeah. it's not their job. It's, right. it's yours, right? So yeah. how did that situation end up leading you into the work that you do now? So I actually ended up in coaching following an interest in the wellness industry as a whole. So in order to improve my own personal life, I decided to improve my focus on my own well-being. So I got into essential oils and aromatherapy, um, mindfulness, and I even did a massage course um, at one point before I found coaching. And, and then I started learning a lot more about core values and limiting beliefs. Um, from there, I discovered that something super important to me is giving back. So I need to feel like I'm contributing something to feel like my job is rewarding. And being able to use my own experience and the skills I've learned here means that I get to contribute in a really meaningful way to a lot of people's lives. Nice. Yeah, I, I feel so strongly that, you know, life is a beautiful thing. It's short and it's to be lived to its fullest. Um, and I'm also quite a driven person. And so I resonate with the desire to have a purpose, which a lot of women find from their careers, myself included. So being able to bring these two together in harmony is something pretty wonderful. That is pretty, uh, pretty phenomenal, actually. So what's your overall aim with the work you do, the, the, the end goal, so to speak, although it doesn't sound like there's ever really an end, does there? <laughs> I mean, my overall vision is to help people build a life that they're happy with, starting with their career. If you love your job, everything else becomes much easier. Um, my mission is to empower women to create successful, fulfilling career paths while unlocking their freedom to reconnect with their true selves, to live a life of real, lasting happiness. Nice. It's not so much about helping people find a new direction, but fall in love with the path that they're on. That's phenomenal. Because sometimes it's just not realistic to go, okay, quit your day job and go be this, right? And go yeah. do that. Especially, you know, for women. Um, sometimes, you know, in a marriage relationship or family relationship, our uh, paycheck makes the difference between just skirting by and actually, you know, like, being able to give the kids soccer lessons or something, you know? Right. Um, mm -hmm. And there's a there's a big cost to the family if mom goes and follows her dream. Or, you know, in the case of single moms, if you're the only income, you know, how are you going to, to, to do your dream? So doesn't it become much more practical to fall in love again right where you're at? Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is that, you know, a lot of people in in these kinds of jobs have worked really hard to get where they want they had an ambition and they had a dream in the first place and you know sometimes you get into that role and it's not what you thought but maybe there's a way that you can figure out how to make that work for you agreed agreed now what are the values that you bring to this relationship between yourself and your clients what can they expect from you so my personally one of my biggest core values is freedom so i love that i get to align my life with this while helping others to generate that feeling as well but my brand values are empowerment integrity joy and freedom so i really believe that empowering women in a work environment is a big step towards creating a society and a workplace culture where people are respected and valued and productive because they're happy to be there so when I work with my clients, the main result that they often find is that they feel more empowered. They take this accountability and they learn tools and strategies to, to create the, the job that they want. And I mentioned integrity as well, because there are a lot of, you know, a lot of people, a lot of women in the workplace that unfortunately have, you know, molded themselves to fit into you know sometimes a toxic environment to to be able to get ahead and that's the you know the route that they've found to get where they need to be personally i think that you know there's not a need to compromise who you are or you know kindness and just generally treating people how you'd like to be treated so learning how to get where you need to be without compromising on that is really important nice very nice now speaking of that 
toxic work environments. Do you mm. often end up with clients where you know you're you're trying to get them to fall in love with their nine to five again, and their boss is going, oh, no, 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 I need her this way, miserable. Just leave her alone. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a valid concern, especially when I first start working with people. That's often something that they will bring up as, you know, a potential blocker. You know, I can do all of this work, but if my boss turns around and says, not interested, then, you know, what was the point? But one of the core pillars of my coaching program is understanding and unleashing your own values. So once people understand and, and really harness what it is that they're bringing to the table, it becomes much easier and much more comfortable to get what they want out of what they're doing. And it's a more natural conversation to, to approach a, a pay rise or, um, you know, have that confidence to, to back up the, the reason that you're asking, you know, the value that you're bringing and it, it's a lot more effective. Makes sense. Makes absolute sense. Now, what are the biggest issues that people bring to you? I mean, I, you know, as you're talking, I'm going back through different jobs that I've had and going, check, check, <laughs> you know, I had, I had one um, real estate investor boss that it was just him and me. So that meant that was me <laughs> in the reception mm -hmm. area all day long. And he would breeze in when he felt like it. And mm -hmm. this guy would do stuff like he would call and if he didn't, if I didn't answer the phone, he would call back again and again and again and again and again until he got me. Well, this the, the I, I was in the bathroom, <laughs> right? And I come back and, and the phone is ringing and I pick it up and he's like, where have you been? I have, I've been calling for the last 10 minutes. And I'm like, that's impossible. I was gone for seven. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but those kind of people, right? So what kind of issues do, do your clients come to you with because I, I there was only a short period of time that i was able to tolerate that job oh that, I, that's understandable <laughs> um all sorts really is the answer um i work with people who want to apply for a promotion but they're lacking in confidence um or those who feel like they're ready for the next step or deserve a pay rise to help them position themselves successfully and, and prepare to ask for it right through to people who are experiencing burnout and a crisis of direction. Helping people recover from burnout, fall back in love with their job and get back on track with tools in place to prevent it happening again is something I find so rewarding. Nice, yes, that, that is really, really amazing. Now, do you have like a top tip that you would like to uh, share with our viewers? Let me think. Accountability is everything. Your life is about you. It's for you to enjoy, for you to make the most of, for you to write your own story. So understanding and accepting that only you can control the things you can control and the results that you get are directly attributable to your own thoughts and actions is super powerful. It's a real game changer. Awesome stuff, awesome stuff. <laughs> now, tell me a little bit about, you know, how, your clients are being affected or the clients that are coming to you right now are mm -hmm. some of them coming because they don't have a brick and mortar job to go back to and they're trying to create something that would be a job of their dreams are you getting a lot of that are you getting a lot of people that are like i'm an essential worker and i am burnt out help me mm -hmm. um what are what are you seeing right now what's coming to you because of this pandemic um, I would say probably a 50-50 split. So a lot of my clients are um, in a corporate job in a world where nobody really wants to invest too much. Everyone's a little bit worried about the job market, that kind of thing. But they, you know, there's only so much time that they're prepared to wait and sit back and, you know, blame it on the pandemic. And they still have their goals and they still want to feel useful and a lot of it is a lot of people's versions of success is not just earning more money or having a better title it's you know a better work-life balance or feeling valued or knowing that they're contributing something in the workplace so um a lot of people are, are coming to me with with those challenges of how can i how can i still prove myself and how can i 
feel like more connected with my job during these times when all anyone can talk about is coronavirus. Um, and then on the flip side, you know, there are a lot of people, especially like in the events industry who are furloughed at the moment. So they're on temporary leave and they're not sure whether they've got a job to go back to. Should they start looking? Should they be fighting, you know, to compete for, for perhaps limited jobs when they go back, that kind of thing. So helping them really understand what it is that they want. Is this the right time actually to make a change? Was the job that they were doing before something that they still want to do? What's it going to look like when they go back and, and how to adapt so that they're, they're still feeling fulfilled and connected with, with their career? That's awesome. That's awesome. I give you kudos. There is uh, no, not, that is not a field that I would really want to be in myself right now because there is so much in our face that says limits. No, this mm -hmm. won't work. All of that. And I give you a lot of props and kudos for keeping people focused on, but you got to be ready for when it happens you, exactly. because it will happen. There has never been a pandemic that has wiped us out. There has never been a pandemic that's lasted forever. Mm -hmm. um, we will survive this. We will survive yeah. this. Absolutely. And being adaptable will help, right? Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about this free guide that you're gifting to our viewers today. Three mindset shifts to secure your next promotion. That sounds very interesting. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up actually. Yeah, so um, basically I've put together a guide. It's three very simple steps to shift your mindset just a little bit. Um, and accountability is one of them that I've talked about already. Accountability is key. So I've got three in the guide. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just all about repositioning the way that you think about things and the way that you behave and the way that you approach situations at work to really position yourself as, you know, a candidate who is ready for the next promotion or, you know, give yourself a, a little bit of backup when when that's what you're asking for. And likewise, to, to recognize if you're actually ready and if that's something that if there's other tweaks that you need to make first. So it's, it's quite enlightening. Nice. Excellent. So I do highly encourage all of our viewers today to look at the comments or look at the uh, description. There's a link in the description for you to go and collect this from Charlotte. Um, and also, I highly encourage you to reach out to her and just have a conversation. Um, something may come up and be revealed out of that conversation that may surprise you. For example, um, I was talking yesterday with um, a, an old friend of mine. I mean, I've known him since I was 10. We used to competitively roller skate, not together, wow. but we were both skaters. Um, and he now, he went to a prestigious film school and for the last 10, 20 years, he's been a sound and lighting man for live performances. So, you know, as bad as it is for the musicians, they can still pick up their guitar and sing a song on YouTube. There's nothing to light for him. <laughs> Right. So he's like, you know, my business is 100% dried up. And in the course of, it wasn't even me, it was somebody else that was chatting with them. Like, can you do this? Can you do this? And he pops up with, well, yeah, I, I could edit podcasts and interviews. I, I, I was trained in that too. And we're all like, dude, dude, <laughs> we're screaming for people like you out here. Please, please, please consider it. And, you know, he's probably over there going, but I want a light Friday night live band event. Well, guess what? That's not happening right now, and we need you over here. So mm -hmm. long story to get to the point. The point is reach out to Charlotte just to have a conversation because you don't know what might be revealed as a new possibility for you that will light you up and, and give you a whole new path to follow um, as you're navigating this pandemic recovery. Would you disagree, Charlotte? Absolutely not. That sounds that sounds spot on. And, you know, I, I do spend, um, you know, quite a significant amount of time each day in, um, you know, the direct messages on Instagram or Facebook. So um, I'd, I'd encourage anyone, like you said, to reach out and connect with me. Um, and yeah, I'd love to see how I can help. So I'm awesome. Char at Charlotte Crabtree official on Facebook and Instagram. Excellent. Excellent. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to ask you also, um, 
what are your thoughts about social media activity, especially if you are looking to show up on the radar at your work already or looking for a new corporate position? Um, you know, that's that's kind of that can be a pitfall, especially when right now we don't have anything occupying us but arguing about masks and testing numbers and, and all of these things that people are losing friends over. Mm -hmm. Give us some guidance on what to be aware of in your own social media if, if you're looking to advance in your job or find a new job. I mean, I think this rolls back really to the, to the value that I was talking about of integrity. Um, I wouldn't ever advise somebody to be a certain way on social media if that's not how they are in real life. Um, depending on the type of job that you want to work in and the type of industry that you're in, you know, there's a level of, you know, your social media account is your personal account and you should be yourself. But likewise, if you're looking to work in, you know, the corporate world, there is an element of background checks and you know people want to make sure that they're not employing somebody who shows up in an interview as an angel um when they're arguing with people about masks on facebook <laughs> um but yeah i think um i think if you hold yourself with integrity um one of my favorite things is actually the red face test um and i think if you make a decision about something something you do if somebody asked you about it and your face went red you shouldn't have done it and that's how I, that's how I tend to live. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Very much. Awesome. All right. Now, do you have um, a couple of final thoughts or a final thought for our guests today? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, these are, these are very strange times. Um, it's, it's really important to, to keep a positive outlook, keep a positive mindset there are tons and tons of online resources about mindset and very simple things you can do, you know, to keep your spirits up and, and to change your outlook and things like that. Um, in terms of career status and dreams and things like that, there is never, there's never not going to be a career for you. Your career and your life is what you make it. So think big, dream big, and then make it happen. Beautiful, beautiful advice. Thank you so much for what you're doing to help people make it through the chaos and and confusion that's going on out there. And thank you for being my guest today, Charlotte. It was a pleasure. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Now, thanks so much, Facebook. It's been another great week. Have a fantastic long, well, I'm having a long weekend. You have a great weekend and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye. When you open energy work makes that recovery progress so much faster. That recovery is possible. You do not have to live as a victim until your last days. You have unbelievable strength and I know that because you're still here. Do you want to create something completely unrecognizable with your life? I can show you how.